but cunningly, when such evidence is found, if it appears to, in some way, prove our history to be different to what is taught, it is hurriedly dismissed, ignored, hidden, thrown into a dark basement locker or somehow, mysteriously lost. In the past many such acts of intellectual vangalism were often committed in the name of various religions in an effort to maintain supremacy. Such things are probably to be expected by religious organizations as most are essentially insecure in their foundations and need constant reinforcement, but when we find these deeds also being committed within the scientific community it becomes far more sinister and disturbing. In an institution of learning such an attitude can only be described as detrimental to the true pursuit of knowledge and extraordinarily unscientific, at best. And have you ever noticed how many scholars that did actually come forth with a different theory about our past, and seriously attempt to discover and debate the real truths, often have their efforts constantly thwarted and are invariably ridiculed and ostracized? And not just by academia either, many are quite often terribly vilified through legal, social, and media channels as well. It seems incredulous how much trouble and effort is actually gone to in order to stifle their information and perpetuate what appears to be an enormous myth that is being currently presented to us as historical fact. The real truth of the matter is that almost every continent on earth can lay claim to some strange or unusual relic from the past that cannot easily be explained by either academic or theologians. Many scholars have attempted to explain away or quietly dismiss such enigmas offhandedly but there are simply too many that have been found and even more that continue to be unearthed that just cannot be explained away. Where then, did all these things come from? Do we need to know? Are they all nothing more than a collection of interesting and unexplained oddities from a past that is largely unimportant to our future lives, or is there actually something of benefit, or even great importance, that we can learn from them? Was there the real reason for the people of old to have gone to such a ridiculous amount of effort to create the many intricately detailed works of such amazing precision that have been recovered, or to build such incredible structures? Could there be some message contained within the structures of these ancient places that we may be missing? If these ancient structures were really designed purely as temples then it certainly seems that these people went to an awful lot of trouble to build them and to make sure we would notice their work. Or could it be that many of them were perhaps something other than merely temples or fortresses? When examining some of these structures it seems inconceivable, almost incomprehensible the people who lived in our distant past could possibly have ever created such enormously impressive stone monuments and delicately tooled items, but somehow, they are there, and we're not just talking about a couple of odd items. Here either, there are absolutely hundreds of them in all shapes, sizes and forms. Ancient Monuments Sunken ruins, incredible pyramids, strange and out-of-place artifacts of a scientific or mechanical nature, and even other things, in almost all countries, right across the entire expanse of our globe. Thankfully, in recent years a number of very reputable scientists, mathematicians and archaeologists have begun to realize that things are quite simply not what they have seemed and are beginning to explore some of the more radical possibilities of man's beginnings that evidence has suggested. In this time several new fields of study have also opened up within the science community. Undoubtedly one of the most intriguing of these fields must surely be the study of whole parts or out-of-place artifacts though often the study of these whole parts can present a good deal more question than it can answers. Before the study of whole parts was recognized as a genuine though still highly criticized field of study, such items were usually considered merely as curios or archaeological oddities. An out of sight out of mind approach was invariably adopted towards any such artifacts and they were quickly locked away or, in acts of gross irresponsibility, dumped at sea before anyone noticed, so as not to rock the archaeological, anthropological or historical boat, so to speak. Many such artifacts are rumored to have been dumped off the coast of America by the Smithsonian Institute, after all, who wants to rewrite all those history books? Such out-of-place artifacts were usually deemed painful or time-wasting because they invariably provide evidence that is contrary to the orthodox tenet we are presented with, and they raise far too many questions for the closed-minded. They can be the most intriguing question too. All of these artifacts ultimately question our past as they simply don't belong where they were found and definitely don't fit in within with what we know to be man's history. Yet here they are, right before our eyes. For example, how could ancient jewelry bear evidence of electroplating? 
How could a stone slab and set of earplugs from the Aztec era bear the signs of being machine cut at a time when there were supposed to be no machines? How can there be ancient maps that accurately show the Antarctic coast and continent, free from ice, hundreds of years before it was even discovered? How could a lump of coal have a delicate gold chain trapped inside? How can there be numerous signs on Earth that suggest ancient atomic or nuclear warfare? How can ancient Indian texts contain scores of pages of complicated flight manuals? How can modern human fossils exist? How could people in ancient times have moved 800-ton blocks of stone? How could the Mayans have built have built those gap-free megalithic fortresses? How could a 500,000-year fossil-encrusted geode contain the spark plug within it? How can there be a computer code or algorithm encoded into the text of the Bible? And that's just a few of the examples. There are literally dozens more. In the ensuing investigations of such enigmatic riddles and artifacts there have been many amazing and sometimes downright outrageous statements made by people in numerous publications throughout the world. So many in fact, that it becomes difficult to distinguish truth from fiction. Theories have been put forth concerning vast armies of slaves, teams of craftsmen devoting their entire lives to the completion of one small object, master stone masons, alien intervention, beings from other dimensions, time travelers, gods from other planets, all have been suggested as possible explanations, and the list goes on. At this point you may be asking, but why should we really care anyway? What's all the fuss about? The past is just the past, isn't it? Well, interestingly enough, such may not always be the case, because the past may also be a good indication of the future and, notwithstanding the fact that it would just be awfully nice to actually know the truth. There are many scholars who believe that there are certain routine events that occurred on Earth that concern both mankind and the planet we live on significantly. Many believe them to be events that are, in fact, a normal part of our solar system's rotational mechanism and that they happen in regular and predictable orbital cycles. There also is real evidence to suggest that the people of Earth's ancient past possessed some very detailed information concerning these events. Many of them based their entire cultures sciences and religions on them. And there are also other more esoteric signs, enigmatic references and hints of a hidden book or code with which we may be able to unlock these mysteries of our past and future. At face value, it seems significant that those people who inhabited our far distant past quite obviously considered a detailed understanding these celestial events to be far more noteworthy and important than any other religious knowledge, science, or indeed anything else at all. In fact, they considered the information to be so important, that they appear to have based their entire civilizations upon it. The question is why? Why such an extraordinary preoccupation with astronomy and the zodiac? What for? What kind of information could they glean from such a constant and accurate scrutiny of the heavens that they deemed so important that it would account for the meticulous degree of perfection insisted on in aligning their structures? How on earth did they acquire such extraordinarily sophisticated knowledge to begin with? Who or where could they have possibly acquired such information from? Much of it is data that would probably be extremely useful to us today and yet we have only learned a fraction of it and we are still searching through ancient myths and modern sciences trying to fully comprehend that which we have so far managed to gather. Most people think of the Zodiac as names for nice patterns in the sky or a report they read in a daily newspaper but the Zodiac is actually an incredibly complex celestial mechanism. It must be clearly understood just the ancient knowledge of its existence is astounding because even the basic understanding of the phenomenon of precession of the Zodiac requires some very advanced scientific know-how to obtain. It does not happen from someone merely observing the stars, even if they were to spend their entire life doing so and yet we ourselves obtained our knowledge of precession and the cycles of the zodiac from the ancients, not through discovering it of our own accord. Even when the earth was still believed to be flat, man had knowledge of the zodiac and precession of the equinoxes. Precession is the result of a slow axial wobble the earth maintains as it travels around the sun so how could that possibly be? This fact alone presents substantial evidence that our history may not be really what it seems and if our history really is substantially different to what has been presented to us, and may truly hold significant information in regard to our future as the evidence seems to suggest, 
then why is the real information being withheld from the general public? It is one of the intentions of this book to examine many of these subjects and the urgent significance it holds for us all. But be warned, to properly answers to these questions, we have to be prepared to assimilate a vast amount of data and to look outside of the orderly academic framework we have been given of our history. We must also be prepared for the moment, to objectively look outside of any currently prevailing religious belief system we may embrace and attempt to examine all of the evidence with an open mind before blindly believing any doctrine. Please understand at this point that it is not my desire to attack any religion or creed during the course of this book, nor do I wish to diminish anyone's personal religious beliefs. My sole intention is the presentation of facts and an examination of the implications that are presented to us through a rational assimilation of evidence. For those of you who are religious, I ask to remember before dismissing any of this evidence offhandedly that Jesus himself said, The truth shall set you free. If any person reading this belongs to a religious organization that rests on a foundation so frail that it cannot be faced by the facts and hard evidences that will be presented during the course of this work then I would suggest that it may be prudent for them to examine their surroundings and consider the sad possibility that their faith may have been misplaced especially those poor unfortunates belonging to the new wave of unbelievably misguided radical Islamic groups who somehow mistakenly believe they are doing the will of valid while in fact twisting the words of their own faith beyond recognition and blowing themselves and others up in the unfathomably deranged belief that mass murder leads to paradise and they will be wind up the ebon if they kill those who embrace a different belief system. But then most such individuals are usually banned or prevented from reading anything that may interfere with their doctrine anyway. Radical religious extremism seems to have been in our world since the onset of religion, either from one side or the other. Of course back in the 15th century it was Christian suicide bombers like Guy Fawkes trying to blow up London and not those who embrace Islam, but the same extremist misinterpretation of doctrines was evident even then. In any serious attempt at discovering the real truths to our past differences of religious opinion should be set aside and there is no piece of information that should be left out. Not anything. No ruin, artifact, doctrine, myth, legend, fossil, ho apart or otherwise, should be considered too small or insignificant to be included in the puzzle and examined for its relevance. For without all the evidence, Discovering any real answers to our past without contradictions would not be possible and be no more than another fanciful theory. But the thing is, my intrepid reader, when you really get involved in the topic and look at what data actually does exist, much of it in the form of hard physical evidence, that completely and utterly dissolves both our academic and theological views of history, you see, it reinforced by a myriad of ancient texts. Then you witness the extraordinary lengths that some governments and both the academic and religious communities at large are willing to go to, just to keep the information out of the public eye, it becomes very hard to keep the word conspiracy from springing to mind. And you can forget the media. Naturally, I'm well aware that whenever anyone mentions the word conspiracy these days, especially when referring to the science or archaeological community, they are walking on very thin ice and toying with their own credibility. The modern world tends to be very skeptical about conspiracies unless we're talking about al Qaeda, or perhaps some other terrorist splinter cell either real or invented, and the scientific community considers itself to be reasonably impregnable behind the walls of academia it has created for itself and they simply hate people who attempt to tunnel in underneath and undermine their doctorates. We have been deeply conditioned to immediately associate the word conspiracy with the word theory yet if one is to analyze the nature of what a conspiracy really is it suddenly becomes easy to see a number of them happening all around us, almost every day. All a conspiracy actually consists of is two or more people, maybe even a committee, deciding to do something in order to achieve a mutually desirable outcome for themselves, and not really telling anyone else about it. One person just needs to say hey if I do this and you do that, then this should happen and we'll be better off. And bang. You have a conspiracy. Just look at insider trading, there's a nice little conspiracy for you.